Okay, Psalms 115. A psalm that you're not going to hear in the Catholic Church. I guarantee. When I sat in the Catholic Church as a young boy, all the aids of worship were all around me. Mary and Jesus and saints and apostles and all of stone and metal and plastic and well let's step aside from tradition and let's see what the Bible has to say. And it's who gets the glory? God, self, or idol? I think idolatry is one of the big Ten Commandments. I, I think it is. Not unto us, O Lord. Not unto us, verily, verily. It's repeated. But unto thy name give glory. Glory belongs to God. If glory goes to any other noun, person, place, or thing, it is a sin. For thy mercy, why God should get the glory, for his mercy, and thy true sake. God is unable, cannot, will not, and it just absolutely possibility cannot lie to us. Man can lie. Even a good man is capable of lying. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? Even are the Gentiles. This is written to Jewish people. And the Gentiles say, Hey, where's your God? I've had unsafe people say that to me. Hey, where's your God? Where's the God that you serve? Sitting in heaven on the throne. But our God is in the heaven. Plural. He doeth whatsoever he please. That's a pretty bold statement. And any sin mongler, anybody who is perverted will go in there, well, see, my God can do anything. My God can be a filthy God. And that's your God, a filthy sinner. My God is holy and righteous, and he can do whatever he wants that's right, it's holy, and it's proper. I already told you, our God's not going to lie. Your God may lie to you, because he's the father of lies. My God does whatsoever he pleases. It does not please my God to lie to me. Our God's in heaven, the heavens. We're going to look at verses 4 through 8 on God's, small g-o-d-s, that are here on the earth. And they're in churches, all denominations. And they're on the dashboard of cars, they're on fireplaces, they're in homes, they're at the workplace. They're all around. And you can buy them pretty much in any store you want. You can get them for the movies, you can get them for television, you can get them for sports, you can get them for Baptist, you can get them for Catholic, you can get them anything. What are these idols? The idols are silver and gold. Metal. The work of man's hand. You know how you can tell an idol, turn it over and look. If it says made in Taiwan, made in America, made in Japan, made in Russia, made in Canada, made in Mexico. That's made by, that's made by a man. They have mouths. I've seen many statues in the Catholic Church. I grew up in St. Mary's Catholic Church in London, Connecticut. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I witnessed. I've seen statues multiple. They have mouths. Okay? But they speak not. And Paul calls them dumb idols. 
Now he's not dumb, he's not calling them dumb as stupid as I would call them. He means dumb idols when he talks to the Corinthians, I believe it is. He means they're unable to speak. Dumb means unable to speak. In the Bible sense. And you've got your statues of Jesus, you got your statues of Saint Christopher, you got your statues of Mary, you got your statues of the Pope, you got your statues of whatever you got your statues of. And they probably have a mouth. And they can't speak. Oh, they try to speak. I know some that try to, one, I think it says something about eat more chicken. But it, it didn't come out of his mouth. I think Aaron would be a representation of that. I'm sorry, did I kick again? You tried to make that cow talk. It's an idol. But, you know, because with a Christian tag on the rear, it's okay. No, it's not. Eyes that have they, but they see not. Ears, they have ears, they hear not. Now, is it remarkable that one of the things Jesus said often, they have eyes to see, but they see not. <laughs> they have ears to hear, but they hear not. According to this scripture, when Jesus said that, you know what he likened them to? Dumb idols. You know, when I went to the Catholic Church as a, as a boy, growing up, I didn't have fear of those things. They didn't follow me. They didn't stare at me. They didn't talk to me. They didn't look at me when I sat there in the pew. Just statue. You know what? The psalm is the same. Unlike God who's in the heavens, and we're going to read more, they have no light. My God has a mouth and he speaks. My God has eyes and he sees. My God has ears and he hears. Noses have they, but they smell not. I have a God that has great words, I said. He said about Jesus, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. Eyes, he says, behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Ears. God heard the man cry out, I got leprosy, Lord, will you heal me? Lord, I'm lame, can you heal me? Lord, will you remember me in paradise, in your kingdom? And God heard. Noses. I mean, there's a couple times the Bible records where God smelled the smell of the sacrifice. And he liked it. And Noah got off that ark. And he sacrificed some of them animals. God said, that smells good. The Bible likens to the incense being offered up as the prayers of the saints which pleases God. You know, if you're in a church and you got idols there and... and and you know, electrical outlet starts fire. Their, their eyes are going to not see the fire. Their noses are not going to smell the, no, the smoke. And they can't say with their, with their mouth, fire! Those dumb miles will have you burn in the fire that they're going to burn in. They can't run out. You got to care. And it's, it's great. Catholic Church has, I remember in New London, Connecticut, St. Mary, they would mount, they would mount Mary and march her up and down Huntington, I think it's Huntington, I don't remember now. And they stick money to her. She couldn't walk, they had to carry her. They have hands, but they handle them. My God put out his hand and healed the lepers. My God put his hands out one time and made spit and clay and opened the eyes of a blind man. My God laid out his hands to be nailed to the cross. Feet have they, but they walk not. And the disciples beheld the feet of Jesus. And Jesus walked on the walked on the sea with his feet. Neither speak thee through their throat. And just 
Genesis 1, always to Revelation 22. God and Jesus speaking. How good is your aid to worship? Talk to it. Have a conversation with it. You pray to it, but it don't answer you. That's a great God. That's a great testimony. I've got my eye. My, my aunt had one of them things. The heart of Mary or whatever it was. And she prayed to an eye. It didn't do you nothing. St. Christopher was retired from business because he was the patron saint of automobiles and they kept finding him in the, in the junkyard. He failed his job. They, right, that make them, the them is what we just read, the idols. They, those are the workers, those are the men that make them. They, the workers, and we saw them in verse 4, that make them, the idols, verse 5, 6, and 7, are like unto them. No life and no sense. And you're going to call them an aid to worship. And the Bible says that those that make them are just like them. No life. No senses. Uh, smell, touch, see. So is everyone that trusts in them. Oh, put that down in the Catholic. You know, you know what God just said about the Catholic Church and your aid to worship? Do you have a Catholic idol? You have no life and you have no sin. There it is. Are you involved with a religion that has a big fat God? You can't lose weight? Followed up in, in, in a yoga position? You're just like it. You're dead. You're dumb. You're no life and you have no sin. Both sin. I'm finding an application to both. You have no sense of feeling, touch, smell, and you had no sense. You're dumb. You're stupid. How I do So when we talk about the heathen, there's the heathen. And then, oh, Israel. Israel is supposed to be opposite. And yet, what were the Israelites doing in the time of Jeremiah? We were offering cakes to the Queen of Heaven. We were giving our babies to the, to the bronze Baal. Molech. That was a large statue that had a belly, had a mouth, and it was fire, and they would throw their babies into that fire. And other gods. O Israel, trust in the Lord. Now he said in verse 8, those that trust the statues are like the statue. Dumb. Israel, you're opposite. You're not to be like him. Christian, you're not to be like it. As a nation, trust the Lord. God hates idolatry. And even Paul spoke about and against idolatry. That's the nation Israel. He is the help and their shield. What is the shield described as the Christian? The shield of faith. Here the shield of faith is also the shield of help. And the Lord is their help. And the Lord is to be your faith. O house of Aaron, there's the priest. Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You got the nation Israel, and you got that special police craft class. Not the not the Levite, though they're, they're the Levite. Aaron. All priests were Levites, but not all Levites were priests. And he's speaking to the priests, the sons of Aaron, the house of Aaron. You tr you're supposed to be trusting the Lord. You're the one supposed to be serving God. I guess you're capable of going aside and not doing right if there wasn't be that warning. I guess Calvin is wrong because if, if Calvin will rule all the priests of Aaron, you're going to serve me and that's it. No, that's not it. And there were priests like Eli who served their own selves and their children. 
Verse 11. Ye, this is the individual. We've gone from nation to the priest to the individuals. The 12 tribes, one tribe, but specifically Aaron, and then all the tribes. Ye that fear the Lord. That sounds good. You fear God. Nothing wrong with that. Trust in the Lord. I guess you can backslide. I guess you would have a free will not to trust in the Lord when you love the Lord and fear the Lord. You can go and sin against the Lord. David did. Solomon did. Christian. We're saved. And yet we have, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all righteous. Why? Oh, I'm saved, but I still sin. He is their help and shield. Again, that shield's a shield of faith for the Christian. What is it? It's help. What is it? It's the Lord. Perfect definition. The Lord has been mindful of us. There's a church. It's Israel. It's the people of Israel. It's the priest of Israel. It's Israel, 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 Israel. There's no church yet. There hasn't even been the birth of the Messiah. He will bless us, Israel. He will bless the house of, well, you say, well, how can you say that the Lord is mindful of us as Israel and will bless us, Israel, when he says the house of Israel? All right. Well, didn't he say verse 9, Israel? Didn't he say verse 10, the house of Aaron? Didn't he say ye? And then he says us, individuals, us, individuals, and then the house of Israel, Israel, corporate. He will bless the house of Aaron. That's the priest. Though Israel has been set aside corporately and the priest today, they're coming back in the tribulation period and they're going to be praised and honored by God the Father and God the Son during the millennium. God is not finished with them. And he will never be finished with them. And I'm sorry, some Christians will go into Psalm 115 and they would praise all great America. That ain't the praise. And telling you the truth, the sheep nations that help Israel and, uh, and trying to take a stand for God in, in the tribulation period, I don't think that's America. Because America will sell out. He, God, will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. All right, you can put the application on us, but who is the them? Aaron's fa family, the house of Israel, and individual Jews. Small and great, what's that? Well, the little tiny infant to the big, great statue. The man that has no money at all, the beggar. The man with leprosy crying unclean, unclean outside the gate to the richest king and the richest person in the land. Now what do you do with verse 14 when you say God's all done with Israel? The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Oh yeah, God had a period, okay, at a period of time God said I'm all done with Israel. No, he's not. Do you realize I believe that Israel is going to get the new earth? And when we go into eternity, and the Christian gets new Jerusalem, I believe the Gentiles and the heathens get the new, the new heavens. I believe the earth grant given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I believe the Jews get the new earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you think there's birth control in, in the news? I don't mean news as the media, but new Jerusalem, new heavens and new earth. Do you think the Jews don't produce any more children? Now the church won't. 
because Jesus says we're likened in angels we're not given to marriage we've married the Lord Jesus Christ and God in the eternity future is going to increase Israel more and more and more and they're going to have to come up and come through the gates and they're going to have to partake of the fruit of the tree of life to get eternal life and come and worship the Messiah Jesus Christ now, I've had battle with Christians my own personal family that tree of life and that healing of the nations is not the church what will the nations have to do in the new in the new heaven they'll have to come partake of the leaves and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ somehow. But it's all about Israel and God's going to increase, 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 and not ever stop increasing Israel like Adam and Eve was supposed to increase, increase, increase until they fell. If Adam and Eve never fell and did not bring death, do you realize how many people this complete universe would have now? I mean, there is, in the genealogies of Israel, there are some men that had seven, eight, and children. And can you imagine a woman being able to give birth to a child under no pain and no sorrow? God is going to increase Israel. And Israel will have beyond the stars of the sky and beyond the sand of the sea. Now, I don't know if, if you would like to go and count the sand of the sea, but that's a lot. Have you ever seen sand, a little bit of sand under a microscope? God promised that to Israel. Ye, Israel, are blessed of the Lord. God bless America. Uh-uh. Not when you legalize abortions. Not when you say it's okay for sodomites to marry. And a Christian has to bake a cake for two lesbians. And, and we got multiple people who don't know if they're male and female. And you got to accept them into society. And you got to have all our welcome in your church. No, God is not going to bless that. If he does bless that, he's going to have to apologize to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. He's not going to. He's going to have to, bat, he's going to, have to apologize to Belshazzar, and he's not going to. And he's going to have to, uh, to apologize to the Ammonites. He's going to have to apologize to the Ninevites. He's going to have to apologize to Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. And he's going to have to apologize to all the wicked people he sent to hell if he were to bless America and her sins. And he's not going to apologize to the sinners. He's going to judge America and her sins. And if they're worthy of hell, he's going to catch them into hell with the nation that forgot him. You just don't want to read your Bible. Ye, Israel, are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. God the Creator. God bless America, and, and, and God we trust. And we send a sat we send a rocket into Mars, and we call it part of its name, evolution. I'm gonna get that name. I gotta write it down my Bible. I'm gonna be using it a lot. If I forget. All right, I'll remember one thing. Last week or two weeks ago, we sent a rocket out to the space station, and that rocket was called Dragon. And how many people did not see Dragon in Revelation chapter 12? Christians. Bible-believing, saved Christians didn't recognize the name Dragon. But it's an American space race. Yeah. And small G-O-D is going to bless America. <laughs> I'd be afraid what they bring back from outer space. Where there's powers and principalities in high places. But the average Christian doesn't even know what I'm talking about. Whoa. Pew! 
hooray over the head. I like kicking. So, we have, verse 15, we have God, creator. It didn't start as a big bang. It ends up as a big bang. You got it backwards. That's what Satan does. He gets everything all backwards. Evolution is backwards. Christ, God, the Holy Spirit made in the beginning and the heavens and earth and the whales and all the good little trees and everything like that goes confirmly blow up with a fervent heat according to Peter and other places in the, in the Bible. The Bible says God as creator. The heaven. Even the heavens. There are three of them. Not seven. Three. Are the Lord's. But they're occupied by devils. They're occupied by men. But God is greater than the devil. But the earth. He has given to the children of men. And one Pacific land on the earth, he's given to the children of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. But we, Israel. Oh, wait a minute. Verse 17. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. What happens when I die? A lot of the Old Testament saints did not know. And there's one thing they did when they died. They went to Abraham's bosom. They didn't go to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's this side of Calvary. Uh, Samuel told King Saul. So I'm like, why did you wake me up? Why did you disquiet me? I was sleeping. I was asleep in Abraham's bosom. What did you wake me up for? And Isaac died and he slept with his father. And Jacob died and slept with his father. King David died and slept with his father. That's what happened to the Old Testament saint. He died, he went to sleep, and he went to Abraham's bosom. The, the Lazarus, he died, and angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. Today, on this side of Calvary, we die and we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. And there you're in silence. You just sleep. Now they've been resurrected by Jesus Christ. And he's death, burial, and resurrection according to scripture. But we, Israel, will bless the Lord from time forth. From this time on, we're going to worship the Lord. And forevermore, praise ye the Lord. Now, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 is current events. And we'll start Romans 1, verse 18. We could read the whole chapter. We'll start verse 18. For the wrath of God, ooh, an angry God, is revealed from heaven. And we just read a bit about heaven. Against all ungodliness, all and unrighteousness of men. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Didn't we read about the truth? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power. And the Godhead that they are without excuse. The creation ability of God. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful and became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools, oxymoron, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Eyes, nose, ears, mouth, feet, let, uh, let, uh, hands. What's that sound like? 
That's what we just read in Psalm. And birds, birds have mouths, eyes, ears. Four-footed beasts, mouths, eyes, ears. And creepy things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts and dishonored their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth, we read about that, of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, we read about that, who is blessed forever. And we'll stop right there. That's all we need to read. So Psalms and Romans fit right into B. So when you go to your mass, say, Mr. Priest, during mass today, can we read Psalms 115 and watch him twiddle his beads and kick your butt right out the front door? How can you sit in a church? How can you sit in your house? How can you go anywhere and have these eyeballs, these ears, these mouths, these hands, these feet there and they don't do nothing and the Bible says they're dumb. Paul said they're dumb and you're dumb like them. As Jesus would say, they have eyes to hear, they have eyes to see, and they see not. They have ears to hear, and they hear not. What is he like? You're like one of these stupid idols. Have your Catholic priest, have your guru explain Psalms 115. And tell him to put it in writing and sign his name to it and send it to me. I'd like to have a copy. 